the Dauntless is not a good ship, but what a pack it is. There are some very, very good, uh, very good upgrades in this ship. So let's dive in. Let's take a look and, uh, and let, let's see what's going on here. So the Dauntless herself is a 2245, four tech slot and only four tech slot. And don't try to get anything more than four tech slot. There are ways of doing it. 26 points, which just feels a bit expensive. So each time you perform an action or use an ability on any of your tech upgrades, place one mission token on this card. During the roll attack die step, you may spend up to two of these tokens to gain an attack die for that attack for each token spent. So this is how you get up to four attack dice. And all of a sudden, that becomes maybe flyable. Maybe. I don't know. Nine durability. It could be a thing. The issue becomes, do you have passive use tech? I mean, reinforced shields could be a thing. Uh, that would actually not be bad on this ship. Maneuver dial is not bad. But there is no reverse. There is no come about. And the firing arc on here is only forward 90, which hurts it. We're not even going to run the independent at all. It's three tech slots. There's no ability. It's not good. All right, Arturus as a captain. Uh, he gets plus five captain skill if he's assigned to a Dauntless class ship. Boy, that worked great before uh, Rule of Three kicked in. Um, unless you want to call that a replacement value, um, which I think I do because he actually comes with a physical skill eight token. Not a skill six. So I think I want to say that he is skill eight. Uh, make an exception ruling to that. Anyway, uh, his action is target a ship at range 2 to 3. Disable either the captain or up to two crew upgrades on the target ship. Your choice. Then place an ox power token beside your ship. Mm, so a bit of telegraphing your next move. He's five points. Now five points for an eight skill captain. Reasonable. Five points for a three skill captain, even with this relatively nice ability less than reasonable he does have a talent slot though that's a bit of a saving grace still not everything i do like our tourists in a one-on-one -on -one scenario uh in fact he can be lethal in that because he's just an action to disable now it's just an action to re-enable but you essentially create a zero-sum game unless you disable up to two crew upgrades in which case then you're starting to come out ahead and i like that aspect all right, Lur has been errated uh, because the original version that came out was, uh, well, pretty good. Uh, and we'll talk about that. But the errata version is during the planning phase, after all ships have chosen their maneuvers, you may discard this card to target an enemy ship that's not within range 1 to 3 of your ship. If you do this, change the ship's chosen maneuver to a green maneuver on its dial. The original version was green or white. Um, that was just way too good. The target ship cannot look at or change their dial after you reset it. If the new maneuver would cause the ship to exit the play area or overlap another ship, the target ship may disregard the maneuver and not move that turn. So, Lure is obviously a very good card because you get to control an opponent's maneuver. You get to say, go left, when they want to go right. You get to say, go straight, when they want to really go straight, right? Go straight one, when they want to go forward three. It messes with formation flying. It sends a ship off to the middle of nowhere. And one bad maneuver takes more than one round to recover from. This is a card that, all in all, is just not fun now does that mean it's totally not worth playing no but currently 
in Fremont Reformation, we have put this on a timeout list because it's a card that just kind of ruins a spirit of fun. And uh, yeah, we wanted to see what the game might look like without it. Emergency Shutdown is another talent. Uh, during the activation phase, before you move, you may discard this card to disregard your chosen maneuver and not move. If you do so, you lose your perform action step for that round. Now, as a one-time effect, I would really like it if you didn't lose your perform action step. Right? On the other hand, I do understand that getting everyone to do a full stop, an emergency shutdown, is a big deal. But an emergency shutdown should also like make you a whole lot harder to hit thematically. You're, hard, you're harder to target. Your your power is going off. You're, you're doing a lot of things to just make yourself harder to be seen. So, I don't know. I, I, could, I like the thematicism of the name, but I don't like the way it was implemented. Quantum Slipstream Drive is actually a really good card and you can see this little symbol here is not on the physical card but it's one of the ones that is banned for organized play use because it is too much like a warp jump like effect so if you reveal a maneuver with a speed of five or greater before performing the maneuver you may discard this card to remove your ship from the play area discard all tokens from beside your ship except ox power tokens then immediately place it back in the play area but not within range one to three of any ship you cannot attack during the round in which you use this ability. So, because it explicitly states before performing the maneuver, so you reveal your maneuver, five straight, for instance. You pick up your ship, you put it down, and then you do a five straight. And all of a sudden, you go from not within range to within range. And... Yeah, it just feels weird that it worked that way. Um, I could very much understand this card working if it didn't let you move after you jumped. But the fact that you exit Slipstream and then get a maneuver just makes me kind of go, mm, really? It just felt too good. Now, it is six points, and six points is crazy. But it's also a card that breaks a lot of missions and uh, just really makes things not fun. Particle Synthesis. This is a, a weird tech. Disable this card. Discard one of your tech upgrades to repair either one damage to your hull or up to two shields. The downside... This can only go on a Dauntless. Uh, named or generic. So, uh, I don't really have a lot of uh, discardable tech. I mean, I guess I could run a whole bunch of copies of Shroud, but even those are two points. My... Here, we can, we can do this. We can search by tech... And cost ascending. And we can look here. So I've got, yeah, shroud, tractor beam, escape pod, escape pod. So I can, I can put on a bunch of Zindi escape pods because Zindi are sub-factioned independent, I believe. Um, so I could do that. <coughs> That would let me have discard tech. Is that worth it? I don't know. Um, I could put on cargo holds. No, I, sorry, I can put on a cargo hold. So that's at least a card I could I could discard. Um, so that, that that's potential. Um, but the, the whole idea of discarding my tech that I need on the Dauntless in order to fire more, in order to repair my stuff, just seems anathema. It's like, 
what am I actually trying to do here? Am I trying to live? Am I trying to fire more? The answer probably is both, but particle synthesis just feels a little too expensive. And then it's an action disable, so to bring it back, it's just, it, it's pricey. Now go, uh, navigational deflector is a four point uh, card. And when taking damage this round, you may discard this card to cancel one hit. If the damage is from a, from a minefield or an obstacle, disable this card instead. You may roll defense dice against obstacles or minefields. I mean, that much is nice. It, and it's fine, it's just a little pricey. Uh, in the right scenario, uh, I could see it because you're, um, if there's a lot of minefields or a lot of obstacles in your way, you can use this to like shortcut something and, uh, and you still get your defense dice and maybe you bring a tech that boosts defenses or something like that. Um, so you can, you can buff the Dauntless that way. So there's something here, but it's still, it, it's just a, it's a little pricey. Force field uh, is another mm, just kind of interesting card. If an enemy ship causes one of your upgrades to be disabled or discarded, you may disable this card to roll one defense die. If you roll an evade result, the target upgrade is not disabled or discarded. So I'm taking a 3 8 chance, 37.5% that I get to save my stuff. But regardless, I'm disabling this card. So let's see, 62.5% of the time, I'm now getting two penalties. It's like I'm playing double or nothing, except the odds are stacked against me at almost two to one ratios. Not quite, a little better, but I, I don't I don't like my odds um, the funny thing is I can run multiple force fields so I can keep on keeping on and I can just double down triple down quad down it, it really seems like a bad idea here but uh, yeah could be could be very interesting the thing is all i'm doing is protecting my stuff except i'm hurting my stuff and i'm not even doing any kind of feedback to the opponent i'm not trapping them i'm just isolating things and so force field doesn't feel properly named it, this is more like a a system lockdown or something um auto navigation is a card that is cause some controversy i'll say it that way because it's not even controversy it's controversy i say geez it's controversy here uh it's uh, so you add a tech upgrade to your upgrade bar it's nice it pays for itself while this card is assigned to your ship you do not need to have a captain card assigned to your ship and your ship has a skill number of two when you reveal your chosen maneuver, you may disable this card to change that maneuver to any green maneuver on your ship's dial. So it, it's very nice. But here's the controversy. The phrase, you do not need to have a captain card assigned to your ship. Can you have a captain's card assigned to your ship? If you do, do you have a skill number higher than two? I would say you can, but your skill number is still two. Um, it's it's weird, right? I I mean I get that auto navigation is essentially hitting autopilot, and so you're 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 kicking off, but that doesn't negate the fact that I'm still paying the points to bring a captain on board to do something, and my captain should let me do something for instance i should be able to run auto navigation with calvin hudson get all the discounts for calvin hudson um, and also when this card gets disabled i no longer have a skill number of two then i go look at my captain and then i go up to a skill number five 
which is totally weird, but also kind of interesting. I don't know. Or maybe auto nav totally takes over, even when disabled. See? Controversy. Uh, power distribution grid is the last card in this pack. It's also a two point tech. During the activation phase, before you move, you may discard this card to disregard your chosen maneuver and perform one of the turns on your maneuver dial instead. Treat this as a red maneuver. I mean, red maneuver, red turns are fine. Um, this ship dial, if we go back to it, has half red turns. Three are red, two are white. Um, so, you know, just do a three red turn and you're not losing anything. Now, you can put this on any ship and... I would recommend putting it on a ship with a lot of red maneuvers or red turns and maybe all red turns or only red turns. Then you're really not losing out on anything. But uh, yeah, that's that's my thinking with power distribution grid. Anyway, that's the pack. There are some there are definitely some interesting cards here. Uh, auto navigation, despite its controversy, uh, particle synthesis, weird. But, but potentially playable. Quantum Slipstream Drive for, for home mission shenanigans, sure. Emergency Shutdown, still intriguing. Uh, Lur, definitely a must-have. Arturis, not bad captain. And the Dauntless, even the Dauntless itself is not a bad ship. Um, I want to say there's a Nyx Intermix uh, video on the channel. Uh with the with a tech dauntless so you can go take a look at that but yeah uh that's the dauntless uh, a, an interesting ship uh an interesting looking model and, and something i think has a place uh in the game something that brings some different variety and with the stuff that came out in the motley fleet pack uh something that got better so that much is helpful. Uh, I would like to see this Dauntless brought down to the same price, though. Anyway, uh, that's it for me, and uh, thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful Christmas Eve and a Merry Christmas. Take care, guys.